Hello and welcome to the Open Heat Transfer Course Conduction. This course is brought to you by RDBTH Aachen University and the University of Twente. My name is Wilko Rolfs and in this video we will look at heat conduction in a multi-layer pipe wall with convective resistances. So it's a little bit of combination of the lecture of multi-layer pipe wall and the lecture of convective resistances. What are the learning goals in this video? So first of all, we look again at the temperature profile in this multi-layer pipe wall and also on the temperature profile outside this wall due to convective resistances. And then we will of course see how can we calculate the total thermal resistance in the multi-layer pipe wall in order to calculate at the end the heat flux released by a fluid flowing through the pipe wall maybe to the environment. So let's look at a few assumptions that we did throughout the entire lecture series by now. So we look at a steady state, a one-dimensional problem and of course constant material properties. Now in this pipe wall we have already discussed that due to the changing area, so the increasing area, we have not a constant area specific heat flux although the heat flux that enters the pipe in the inner area is exactly the same as the heat flux that exits the pipe on the outside. And yeah, from that, it is clear that on, due to the fact that the area changes, of course, the area specific heat flux cannot be constant. Now, the balance is already again quite simple zero on the left side is equal to the ingoing minus the outgoing heat fluxes but we don't want to look too much into the balance we would like to look um, first again to the temperature profile and here we can recall what we have learned in the lecture regarding the multi-layer pipe wall there is due to the changing area and decrease of the temperature gradient because Q is constant and from for years law with constant material properties an increasing area will lead to a decreasing gradient and of course between those areas there is um, can be a jump depending on the thermal properties of the different materials. Now the location that we have not considered in a prior video is here in the inner part where we have a heat transfer coefficient from the liquid inside to the surface and again here we have our typical profile for convection so a high gradient close to the wall where the heat is mainly transported by conduction because of the zero slip boundary condition and the non-moving liquid and the further we go into the liquid the higher um, is the advective motion and the lower is as such the temperature gradient. The same of course applies not only to the inside but also to the outside. And also remember the thermal conductivity of gases and liquids is usually smaller than the thermal conductivity of solids and as such the temperature gradient here in the on the liquid side here is higher than on the solid side and the same applies again here also to the outside. Now if we want to calculate this and describe this by equations we need next to our thermal resistances inside the pipe also uh, resistances um, in the convective um, sides or on the convective sides so we have one resistance here at the radius Re, that's the inner radius, and we have the coefficient alpha A and that describes or sets into relation the heat flux to the temperature difference between the surface and the inner fluid. So now next to the thermal conductivity or the, no, the heat transfer coefficient alpha and the area, Using these both uh, values, we can calculate uh, resistance. So 1 over the 
uh, heat transfer coefficient times area is equal to the resistance. Now we can have a resistance inside. We can also in the same way have a resistance outside. The difference between the resistance inside and outside is of course uh, the radius. So for the inside it's radius i and for the um, outside we call this radius n plus 1 because we might have n different layers. Now recalling what we have learned for the uh, thermal resistance inside the solid part. So we have the two radii R1 and R2 and the heat flux being constant through the entire area. So we had derived already Fourier's law for this case. So the heat flux QR dot is equal to the negative of thermal conductivity times the area, the series now two pi L. And another part is of course then the radius uh, or the two radii that come in by the logarithm here ln R2 divided by R1. And of course here the driving potential, the temperature difference. And looking at uh, this equation here, we have here a conductance on the one side because we have uh, this here is on the um, uh, nominator. If we want to put this in the denominator, we have a thermal resistance and we can also reformulate uh, the thermal conductivities in thermal resistances. And that's what we do right now here. So the re thermal resistances for conduction here are 1 over the thermal conductivity times 1 over the surface area to 2 pi L and then the logarithm R i plus 1 divided by R i. This is now always the inner and the outer radius of each layer. And if we have multiple layers, we have to um, build the sum of the resistances of the single layers. So this is now um, on the one side the convective resistance, on the other side the resistance due to heat conduction. If we want to calculate the heat flux between the inner side with the temperature Ta and the outer side with the temperature Tb, we need to take into account all of the different resistances. So the convective resistance two times and n times the resistance of the different layers. And this equation we can also reformulate now again with an equation that has not the resistance as a measure but a total heat transfer coefficient that we tell here the heat transfer coefficient k that can be multiplied by a reference area and the driving potential. I will come to this reference area once again in the next part here because it has a very important implication. Now if we want to define this k times a star, we can look at these two equations and we see that k times a star is equal to 1 over the sum of all resistances. And that is reformulating this or formulating this now with all the resistances that, that we have defined priorly. Here the convective resistance with the convective coefficient alpha a in the inside the convective coefficient alpha b is now the resistance on the outside. See here that we have the different radii or different uh, diameters. Now this is formulated with the diameters. No problem, it's just changing from then um, two, pa, uh, 2 r to only d. And here on this part we have also the diameters taken into account. Now what we have uh, introduced not yet is the reference diameter. We, I already mentioned that the reference area has an important implication. Now if we calculate the heat transfer coefficient k, we need to introduce a reference diameter that is associated to the reference area. We can choose this reference diameter as we want, but we need to make sure that it is later on the same diameter used in the determination of the reference area. So in this case then we can calculate the overall heat re resistance with the different resistances in series and you can see again here we have on the left side and on the right side the two 
convective resistances and in the center we have the conductive resistances. Once again here um, in the equation that we know from the book of formularies I think that is the important part to consider and to remember and that you are able to use this equation if it comes to such a question that you are able to choose the right areas and that you are also able to choose the right reference area if you want to calculate the overall heat transfer coefficient. In the book of formularies, as you can see here, we do not use the heat transfer coefficient k. We directly calculate the heat flux by the sum of all resistances and the driving temperature potential. And of course, the area is in there. Now, that's already it for today. I would like to ask two comprehension questions. So first of all, how does the curved surface of a pipe affect the temperature gradient at a constant heat flow and constant thermal conductivity? I think this question is quite similar to what we had already in the videos before, taking into account the pipe or the uh, cylindrical coordinate system. And of course, in this type of system, the area changes with the radius. And for a constant heat flow, we can look into Fourier's law and see that the chain changing or increasing area causes a decreasing temperature gradient. Second question, what reference area and reference diameter must be considered when calculating the total heat transfer coefficient K for pipe wall problem? So first of all, it is not really important to choose either the inner or the outer diameter as a reference diameter. That is up to you nearly or up to the one who has calculated the heat transfer coefficient before. It is just important to consider the same reference diameter when calculating the reference area. Otherwise, there is an error in the calculation. But which diameter is used as a reference is more or less up to you or up to the person who develops those heat transfer coefficients and puts them into a table maybe for engineers. Thank you for your attention. Have a nice day.